everyone. It has been a really long time. It's been probably about a month since we went live last in Brazil. We have a great show tonight. We will be having Marquita, aka the Traveling Twin Mama. You guys know that she is absolutely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite um, travel content creators. Her boys really have, I mean, her boys know how to live. If you guys are following her, then you know the Wright brothers, they've been more places than pretty much all adults at this point, and they're only like five years old. So anywho, um, I'm just waiting for Tania to join me. I'm going to... Uh, Hey guys, hey Karen, thank you, Allison. Just add in Tania. I don't know why it's not letting her come on. Oh, there she is. Hi. Hi. Give me just oh, a second. Okay. I'm over here making a mess. I just spilled my liquor. One moment. Okay. Oh my goodness. Party foul already. Well, you guys know I'm still not drinking liquor, so I have a lovely zero sugar peach calypso. Okay. Okay. Sorry we... about that. I'm no. <laughs> I wasn't expecting all of that confusion, but it's a little bit windy outside, and the weather is beautiful, but it's windy. So I decided to come and sit outside and kind of made a little mess. But I'm actually jealous because it's kind of cold here. I've heard. I am ready for the cooler weather, but it is nice that it hasn't. Oh, my goodness. Give me a second. So I think we lost Tania, but that's okay. Um, let me add her back. Cause I'm I'm frozen, so we're gonna start start this over. Oh, okay, she's back. All right. Okay, sorry I about that. I was guys. frozen. I'm sorry. Okay. No worries. It's, it's extremely good. windy. I didn't think this out well, and I did not know it was this windy. And so I'm over here. Everything's blowing. My popcorn and blew off because you know I like my sips with a few treats. My phone, yeah, but it's okay. Uh, the Calypso drink came from a little small bodega in my neighborhood. That's the only place I know that sells the sugar-free ones. Let me see it. The Calypso one that you're you recommending? I've seen those, but I didn't even know if they made them in sugar-free. Is that something new? I guess so, because I just randomly went to the store, and I saw, I was like, oh, y'all got sugar-free ones? Because I kind of miss Calypso from, like, going to, like, the carryout, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, sugar-free? It's for me, and they have so far, I've tried the peach, the strawberry, and the, like, like, ocean blue. And they're all pretty good. I'm trying to think why I'm so familiar with Calypso. I feel like there's something that's so, like, in the, we're not fancy, we don't have bodegas, but in the Valero um, are the little corners. Yeah. Stores. I feel like they have them, and I know I've had the blue one. Um, I feel like I've had the one that you're drinking, but not necessarily sugar-free. Yeah, because they sell them at, like, the gas station, the carry out mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I live in a very uh, bougie area, so it's very hard to find Calypsos in this area. That, um, oh, grocery stores in my neighborhood do not sell that, but good to know. Um, okay. But, anywho, actually, Marquita has already requested to join us live. Okay. Um, but real quick, tell us what you're, uh, what you're sipping tonight. So... I honestly have been kind of bored with my cocktail choices. I feel like for the most part, because I'm not a mixologist and don't really have good bartending skills, um, I kind of like things that are already made. And so tonight I went to Specs, um, because it's right around the corner from my house. And I just walked through the aisles and I knew I wanted a sipper. I knew I wanted something easy. If you've joined Sips and Trips before, you've heard me say that I really like creamy liqueurs. You know, um, I like Bailey's. I like coffee liquors. And so when I was in the store, I came across one called Cookies and Cream. And mm. what, what really made me pick it up is that it's a product of South Africa. And I absolutely love wines from South Africa. Some of my favorite memories have come from South Africa. And the lady in the store was like, you know, it's amazing. You should try it. And I have to say, it has been good so far. It kind of gives you a magic. 
imagine a, even though it's technically a wine, um, imagine a white chocolate martini. Mm -hmm. It definitely okay. is supposed to be giving cookies and cream, but it gives white chocolate martini and it is everything. It has a 16.9% alcohol content, which is one of the most important things to me when I'm buying liquor. And it was also, um, it also had a good price point on it. It's, let me tell you how many ounces if it's, well, it's 750 milliliters, like a standard bottle of wine. And it was less than $15. Okay, then. And I can tell it's something that's going to last because it's not really a beverage. You can sit up and drink in one setting because it's just that it's a sipper, but it's really good. And I recommend it. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to get better at, if you're someone like me that doesn't have the mixology skills, is helping us find liquors that are easy um, to drink straight out the bottle or that may only require a little bit of sweet, some easy juice, yeah. maybe throw in a couple of fruits. And this is definitely one that I'm going to drink again. Okay. So, well, you have to send me the name so I can make sure I tag them in the episode. Got it. And it's cookies and cream. It was on the aisle with like your either your South African wines or um like your Baileys. Anywhere you'll find your creamy liqueurs, it was there and so far it's a hit. I like it. Okay. So tonight we have Marquita, aka the traveling twin mama. As I said in the beginning, she's one of my favorite content creators. Her sons have been all over the world. Her tips are amazing. And she's actually one of the few creators I've been able to meet in person. And she's just as awesome in person as she is um, on social media. So we're going to go ahead and bring her in tonight. She's going to talk to us all about the myths and tips and tricks to traveling with kids, especially with the upcoming holiday season. And so I'm going to go ahead and add her in. Let me see that it worked. As we're at it, okay, there we go. Hey, hey, hey ladies. How, Good. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? We are Good. doing well. Definitely great to have you on. It's nice to meet you as well. I know Jennifer's had the privilege of meeting you in person and online. Um, nice. And so nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. So, so are you tell you everyone a little bit? I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. I was just going to ask, did you come prepared with your sip of choice that you want to share with us? Uh, uh, mine's is tea. I'm okay. getting over a sinus affection, so trying Those to have keep... Been going around. Yeah, trying to keep, you know, it lubricated. But this is nettle tea, which is good for digestion and also for your sinuses. And I got all of that going on. Well, that's hey, good Hey, coming. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. I was just going to so you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your platform and how your boys have been to more countries than me? Go ahead. <laughs> um, so I'm Marquita. I'm the traveling twin mama, wife, and mom to uh, twin kindergartners. They're five-year-old boys. Um, I Before uh, having kids, I was traveling for work. I did, I'm a business traveler as well. So did tons of traveling before having kids. Once I became pregnant, especially with twins, that's when all the naysayers came out and said how I would have to stop traveling and it's impossible to do it with kids and this and that. Um, being the Capricorn that I am, I took that as a challenge. So I figured out how to start traveling with them and they've been traveling since their four months. So they've been on over 50 plus trips. Uh, is it seven or eight countries? I can't keep track now. And I can't remember how many states either. I probably should have had those notes, but <laughs> here I am. But yeah, so the, a lot of my content is just talking about uh, travel after kids. So I do clearly a ton of traveling with the boys, but I still travel solo solo for work solo by myself i've been to over 40 countries um and i've done all of the um world wonders as well so Amazing. i prioritize exactly. yeah thanks prioritize self-travel and also girls trips every year in vacations as well so like you still can travel after kids you just gotta you know finesse your way and figure out how to make that work for you that's definitely amazing you say that you started traveling with them at four months yeah they were four months. Were they your um, first kids, your first two kids? Yes, they're my only children, and they will only be my only children. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I'm going to be a traveling twin mama, not a traveling with No, no that. plus Just, one, no nothing, that, honey. That's, that's it. it. They're and more so than enough. With these being your first two kids, you know, we've had guests on the show that have started traveling with one. You had to start traveling with two, and you started when they were small. How did you prepare for that? 
I did a lot of research. I mean, I was burning the internet on both ends. It felt like just like, okay, what are people saying that have singletons? And what are people saying who have twins? Like, how do I get all, you know, all of the things? It's a lot of stuff to travel with kids, but imagine traveling with two <laughs> babies. So trying to figure out what's the right strollers, what's the right car seats, how do I carry it all? And a lot of it is trial and error. So we started when they were four months and they went on a trip at five months and they went over to Europe by six months. So like that was a quick learning process of like, okay, I can't do a double stroller, especially in Europe, trying to get them in and out of a train in that quick amount of time, not going to work. So a lot of that is, yeah, researching, but more importantly, trial and error and figuring out what works best for me. What, where did you start off with at your first destination with them when they were yeah, so I'm from Milwaukee, and we live in New Orleans, so we went back home okay. to Milwaukee, right? So it was a very simple trip in the sense of I've done it a million times. I'm very comfortable with it. So that way I could focus on just traveling with the boys. like, And that's what I always recommend. The first time you travel with your children, go somewhere you've been. Or at the minimum, do a direct flight. So you're not worrying about like, Oh, how do I navigate Atlanta Airport? Girl, if you ain't never flown through Atlanta, don't try it the first time with children. With that, ain't the, that, that ain't the not. airport for you. <laughs> that's you know? that's when it's me coming through Atlanta Airport, so Listen, I didn't okay. get with nobody else. <laughs> right, so you just got to be, like me, like, I, I yeah, you got to be confident in, like, I am confident in this trip. I've done it before. I know how to make it work. So that is what my recommendation is. Do simple first. If you ain't never traveled, been on the plane yourself maybe first time you go with your children do it downtown staycation mm -hmm. like one thing at a time until mm -hmm. you're comfortable with expanding yourself when you took your first trip with them was it you and your husband or was it you by yeah. yourself it was okay. with my husband i wasn't that brave it was with my husband. let me tell you where my brain is stuck and this is how i can tell that when it gets to a point when i have children that have to travel with them I'm like, so does that mean we're going to do three? Or is he going to have a child? Am, am I going to have? That's where I'm stuck. I, I can't seem to. So what did your first experience with travel with twins at four months look like? How, how did you and him kind of break down the responsibility? So that is actually funny because when you travel with twins, especially uh, infants, uh, what is it? Yeah, infant in arms, you actually can't have both twins on the same side of the plane on the same row because there's only one oxygen, additional oxygen mass. So if there's only three seats, there's only four oxygen mass. So there can't okay. be five humans on that side. Did not know that to my first flight when we sat next to each other with the kids and a flight attendant was like, um, y'all gonna have to, I was like, why? You know, you know how I was like, what, what are you talking about kids next to my family? And then that's what she explained. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. So from then, we do two and two. So two on one side, same aisle, but two, you know, on the ends and in the middle. So that's got it. But your, um, your reel that went viral, did it come from that? From that um, if not that particular one, but that is an element of, okay. it, of like, just knowledge, right? Okay. Yeah. Got it. And so with you posting a lot of content about traveling with kids, and I know, you know, that gets all the moms going because as you stated, when you talk about even with me not having kids currently, I have, I have a lot of people saying, well, when you have kids, your life is going to change. You won't be able to travel. Kind of like what you said, you're going to have to sit at home and do those kind of things. What kind of questions do you mostly get from parents that are looking to travel for the first time with their small kids? It's how. Like, how do you do it? Oh, my God. I can't even go out. And I'm just like, my response to them is like, how do you stay home with your kids? Because my kids, we've had about seven broken windows in this house. Okay, so they, they behave <laughs> way better when we are outside in public being engaged with the world and with people and learning and doing than being in this house because they nothing and bucking in this house like that is what they do right and bucking, oh they yeah they nothings and bucking and ready to fight like my kids are not like oh i'm gonna sit here and be cool calm and collected that is not them and i also explain that to parents like yes you may think your, your kids are a certain way but they behave that way with the people they're more comfortable in and the situations that they're more comfortable in when they start traveling and and being exposed to different things that makes them more aware and cognizant of how to how to act so 
that is usually the question I get. And then it's like, what, what do I bring? Like, how do I travel with them? What strollers, what car seats, what this and this and that, which is a lot. And that is most definitely what I researched a ton of and have tried a lot of different things. And so for me, what I what I have done is to try to make it easy for other moms. So I have like an ebook that explains all of it, or even a simple checklist that I have that has all of my top favorite products for all of the categories from mm -hmm. strollers, car seats, um, what kind of uh, inflatable beds for when you travel with kids, portable potties, like all of those things, all of the different stages that kids go through, what, have, what has helped us travel and keep them as comfortable as possible through that process. But one of the things that I noticed is that you have a lot of knickknacks that you that you mentioned that you you know like you like like the the thing that keeps the luggage all together yeah. or like a little toys for the boys and things like that activities what all and what have you how do you keep all of that organized like is your are your bags like super heavy because every time I see you post them I'm like dang she got that in that bag too like how heavy is the bag now <laughs> that's funny <laughs> Uh, no, the bags are normally not that heavy. I do try to look for, like, so if it's a car seat, like the car seat that we travel with is literally eight pounds. It folds up and it can fit overhead. The The stroller that we used to use when they were in strollers, it literally folds up and can go overhead on the plane. So in my research, I'm like, I got two of them. I can't be carrying no 15-pound car seats and two of them. What I look like, this is not CrossFit. So mm -hmm. really trying to figure out what is the lightest, most effective way to get it done when we didn't use car seats we used the cars the cares harness which is literally a harness that can fit in a backpack right so that is the key of finding the things that allow you to travel with with flexibility like my husband he wouldn't care he would carry all the heavy stuff through it but what's important to you and that's what i always tell like moms and people who want to travel with their kids is what's important to me may not be important to you so you need to just think about okay i took this trip this irritated me this was cool this was not okay i can't wait in line for security with my kids i can't look i can't wait in line for security for myself let alone with two children right so for me it's important to have pre-check and clear so we can get in and out because us waiting just doesn't work. So again, that is just looking inside internally and say what works for me and what, and what does not. Mm -hmm. so, yep. so in speaking of kind of things that work and then things that do not, in kind of trial and erring, erring your way through things, what things have you found as a traveling parent that just did not work? For me, a double stroller. When I tell you I was about to leave a child on the train going from Paris to Amsterdam, they was gonna be on there by themselves because there was no way for me to, for with a double stroller, for those that don't know, is that either, for most double strollers, the ones that I have, it was front and back. You have to take a seat off, right? Then you have to collapse it. And then first you gotta take all the stuff underneath it out. So all the stuff underneath, then you take a seat off, then you gotta collapse it. So trying to do that, put both car seats on the train and then all of our luggage on the train at a stop, sweating bullets. I was like, never ever will I do this again. And then that's when I started looking around like, well, people live in Europe with kids. What do they do? And they all had the Zen yo-yo stroller. And I was like, ah, okay, let me look that up. And so I started looking that up. And when I saw it was like $500 a stroller and I needed two, I said, there got to be a cheaper version. And that's when I found the GB Pocket Stroller, which is more like $200 a stroller. When you need two, you, you can't always get the luxurious things. <laughs> you know, it should be mandatory that when you are a twin that you get like 90 days and then you got to get a job. Because the fact that your parents got to buy double everything, like, uh, y'all ain't getting everything, but y'all got 90 days until you, uh, you, you need to start uh, putting your resume out there. See, that, I'm going to tell, tell my boys you said that because, honey, they already checking off things for Christmas. And I so you know for me, like, even traveling, train travel in Europe will really test you as a traveler for you to see, like, just how much tenacity you actually have. Because I know for me, it wasn't two kids I was packing around. It was a 50-pound bag. And yes. I was like, I can't even maneuver this. So thinking about you having, I would have left that bag. And like you said, thinking about having two kids, I'm packing around. Child would have been on the news. Yeah. 
two kids Mama and just your troll. luggage and their luggage. No. <laughs> like, the way, the way my anxiety is set up, mm -hmm. I, I would have had to make some big decisions. The luggage or the kids. Right. Somebody got to go. And I like my clothes, so bye kids. Well, I'm just saying. It's, it's two of y'all. Any, many, many, more, because one of y'all can't go with mama. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Of the <laughs> one thing that is, is that I love is uh, you posted something recently and it was like the things that your boys have asked for on the trip and it was like room service, the airport lounge, riding to the Uber in instead of walking. <laughs> And as much as it is annoying, I love it, right? Oh, because they, they got luxury down pack, honey. Oh, baby. I, I, in the beginning of the video, I said, the Wright brothers know how to live, okay? <laughs> they know how to live. I mean, they be sitting there on the boat, sipping their little chocolate milk. <laughs> I mean, they don't know nothing about a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> they do not <laughs> and if you ask them their life is woe well is me they be like but mommy why we gotta walk we can't take an uber i'm like sir sir but but at the i'm here for it though because like i love that the kids today they get to experience things like i know for me i was grown right. before i experienced the uh a, a lounge like, you know, my parents was not taking me on a flight nowhere. Um, and so, it, one, it's not, they're going to be so exposed. They're going to be cultured. They're going to be able to move in circle, you know, mm -hmm. move through rooms. Like, you know what I mean? Be able to talk about certain things. But also for young women, um, they're not going to be easily impressed. Right? Oh, right. Because they <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> I was flying first class when I was right. four months with my parents. Nobody you know? dusty daughter is going to be able to rope them into Miami over and over. Right. 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 <laughs> No, that is very true. So I actually posted about that um, today is people expect kids to behave when they travel. But those are the same people who say that kids shouldn't travel when they're young. But us as humans, we only learn by doing. Like, that mm -hmm. is the main way we learn how to do it. And that's how you get these people on the plane acting a fool or in the lounges acting a fool because they've never been exposed been anywhere. to anywhere. Mm -hmm. They've we'll never talk, done we'll it before. It. Can we talk about the behavior in the lounges real quick? Go ahead. I'm sick of it. I saw you get I'm triggered sick of it. real fast. So, so go ahead. And... I, it, just, it did. Because so I can't tell you how many times I've been in a lounge and I see a celebrity, right? And... <laughs> I mind my business. I'd be like, oh, there's Princess Diana over there. I mean, not Princess Diana, but you know what I mean. Right? That's, I, was, I don't know. Here. I don't know why she came up first, but I hope she don't be up there. Uh, let's say Prince Harry. Okay, so Prince Harry is over there. My first instinct is not to take my camera and be like, oh, there's Prince Harry. I actually don't cook, take my camera out at all. I might take a picture of my drink, but that's it. Nobody's in it. Nothing like that. There are people filming whole vlogs whole vlogs, social media content, dancing in front of the um in front of their phone. And it's like, bruh, this is why certain airlines are trying to kick us out of here. That's you the know reason why I mean? Delta saying y'all can't get up in here unless you uh, <laughs> I'm not doing that today. Sorry, Jennifer. I know that was a situation for you. Uh, what you say? I said I that's the reason why Delta Air and then I said I'm sorry, Jennifer. Oh no 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 Delta Delta the main one because mm -hmm. they uh I, the stuff that I see I see in there and when they got rid of that fifty dollars a month that you could get access to the lounge was actually how I ended up first starting to get into the lounge because I was I was the one of the people that was paying the fifty dollars a month. Once huh? but you know what? Considering where Delta's main hub is, if they thought that they were going to be able to get away with that for a long time. Delta should have done better from the start. Let me tell you what messed it up. I truly believe this is what messed it up. Do y'all follow the girl that uh, teach you how to get a sugar daddy? It's a bunch of them. So which one are you talking Sweet about? No. I probably Sweet follow Lee. them all. I'm kidding. Sweet to uh, Sweet to yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So she was like, meet your future, huh, your future, meet your future sugar daddy um how to meet a rich man at the airport and she was like you're gonna go online to delta.com you're going to apply for their what you call the the monthly um membership it's 50 dollars a month you're going to go into this and she was like she made sure she said there's no credit check right she says no credit check you're going to wear blue you're going to go in the bathroom you're going to change your shoes into some heels you're going to have your laptop out and this and that baby within six months delta had announced there you are no we have gotten rid of the 50 dollars a month and I believe
See, I, I, was her. Her. I believe it was her. I could believe it because to be honest, so with, with me being based in Houston, I rarely fly Delta. Like Delta typically is going to be the most expensive flight leaving from here most of the time. Delta is last on my list. But if you're somewhere like Atlanta, I could see how you would take that advice and run with it. it yeah, I, I could they see that. Should, they should. Yeah. I got to. I mean, fifty dollar a month investment, but you may come up, right? Why not? I mean, if nothing else, what's fifty dollars? Three drinks. So, <laughs> That's true. Pretty much. Two and a half. Pretty much. Days. And I remember after she said it, I said, "Well, dang, I have this membership," and I was like, "I'm not using it to my full potential." I didn't know Sugar Daddies was at the lounge, but I'm just <laughs> here to tell know? you. Go ahead. I'm just here to tell you, I have yet to meet a Sugar Daddy at the lounge. <laughs> That's because you didn't go in the bathroom and put your heels on and have your laptop. You didn't follow the directions. So See? she gave you the play and you didn't follow it all the way through. That is on you, ma'am. My check needs like been on since 2012. <laughs> no heels was getting worn at no uh, at no airport. Can you imagine being in Atlanta airport? You know when they built that airport. I saw a meme that said the bit, the architects of Atlanta airport was like, ooh, well, what if we had them run a 5K? <laughs> you, who is walking? Who is who is wearing Let me tell you, I like so rarely travel through that airport because, like, there are things <coughs> where I used to go to Atlanta a lot, but now not so much. Unless I'm, I'm visiting close friends that live there, I forgot how bad it was. So I'm used to strolling in because I have clear whatever just right before. The last time I first off, I think it was something going on with clear, so I couldn't even even use it. I'm looking at the line. I'm like. I don't even know what's going on. Then I think one of the trains was down or it was something going on with the train. And I was like, now I'm about to miss my flight. So I don't, yeah. One yeah. time, right? One time, I thought I was bad, y'all. I thought I was real bad. I had clear. I had pre-check, okay? I was <laughs> like, oh, I can get to Atlanta airport like 30 minutes before my flight. Atlanta? Girl, I I forgot. I think I must have had like COVID brain or something. This was actually pre-COVID. <laughs> but I think I got there 40 minutes before my flight and I forgot. You don't just get through security and be at your gate. Not at all. You gotta Not catch all. the train. Let me tell you, this was a time a time when I had two dollars, right? I'm not even joking with you. I didn't have any <laughs> money, okay? That two dollars like, has got you far. Let me say that because you didn't been everywhere on them two dollars right. to Australia. But no, else, but see, so I be ahead. I be on joke time now. When I say I have two dollars, mm -hmm. it was literally if I miss this flight, I'm gonna have to go sell some ass to uh to get home. <laughs> like that's how bad it was, okay? Like I'm not even joking. <laughs> Excuse me for cussing, but I remember I got off the train and I was like oh my god like I literally have four minutes to get to my flight right and I'm running and I'm crying and I'm just like oh my god like how am I going to get how am I going to get home because all I could think of is I don't have any money right mm -hmm. like I literally don't have any money and I'm running and people are like you can do it you can do it I <laughs> breathe it hard I have tears coming down I'm not even joking people was like come not on you can do it you can do it because and I remember I saw I could see the gate and I I just screamed because I was so tired from running that fast. I was like, wait! <laughs> like, God closed the door. <laughs> and they were like, catch your breath. We're not gonna close the door. And I was flying spirit. You know, spirit don't give you nothing for free. They gave me a they smack and some Dasani when I got to my feet. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Let traveling grace. Yep. It was traveling grace. One of the biggest let down when it huh? comes to travel is get into that gate and that door is closed. And you know, like, there is not. And they open it back up. I have never experienced that, and I pray that I never do. It's not a because, good feeling. No. I remember, <laughs> I remember seeing somebody, how devastated they were when the thing said flight closed. And I was like, dang, man. And then you can see the plane still sitting there uh -huh. that's the worst right part. you're like and you know that they could just open the door if that was a policy you know that they didn't have to follow like i'm right here there there's no reason why i jennifer can tell you i um i've been known for missing a flight of nine and even still i'm, I'm glad that you gate, said or nine because it's really yeah, or 70 but go ahead I do the best I can. That's it. I, I try to show up the best I can every day, and it varies. That's all I can give y'all. 
but <laughs> there's nothing like showing up and as many times as I have been through that when I tell you that hurts my feelings like it literally be leading to me like I need to go cry for a few seconds yes I've been through it yes I know I got to the airport 20 minutes before y'all was gonna close this door but still the disappointment in getting there and knowing now I have to do all these workarounds now they gotta put me on standby now I have to pay for a new flight and it's it's right here just let me on <laughs> Just, just let me off. So I get it. Have you ever missed a flight with the boys? No, 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 no. Well, actually, no, that's not true. So technically, we missed. Uh, it was, it was Thanksgiving. They were little. They were in strollers. And the traffic at the New Orleans airport was horrendous. So my husband dropped us off. And we got in, we got to the gate. He had to go park, and I don't know what happened. He couldn't get, and then the, they were actually waiting. Like, where is your husband? Is he going to security? Where is he? And it just took him so long that they were like, you got to wait till the next flight in the morning. So, that is, we in just, the morning be the coldest one. When they say the next flight in the morning. Yeah, because it was the evening flight. It was like a 7 p.m. because we were flying to Miami for Thanksgiving. And so it was like one of the last direct flights. But traffic was just so bad that we missed it. So yeah, we did miss it. But I didn't. There was no rushing of me running. It was him. Okay. So it no, wasn't this your fault. You you ain't missing. Right. Did. Yes, that's what, no, this is oh my god. How did you end up um, moving to New Orleans? New Orleans is one of my favorite cities. How did you end up there? From uh, my husband, he 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 was here. So when we were dating, we were long distance. And so after okay. we got married, I moved down here. Okay. Got it. And so speaking of airports and missed flights, you know, and some of the difficulties you can go through when they want to add things like security, a train, a five mile marathon, <laughs> five flights of stairs and all those different kind of things. Since you're traveling with smaller kids, what airports have you experienced to where you would tell parents with this one, you need additional time, be mindful of this airport? I mean, most definitely oh. Atlanta. Oh, for you, sure. You need to, if you don't know how to maneuver Atlanta, then you need to most definitely be prepared. My Miami, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That airport uh, is the worst airport on earth. You know they won an award for like one of the best airports. How I said, who F2? Who F2 I to get to, this award? Did they who? say best airport or was it like they had a best, I don't know, food stand or best? No, it was like bathroom. best, it one of been the airport. best airports. No. I was oh, like, sorry. how? They, you're, I, you're I, lying. I paid for that award. Yeah, they, 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 they paid somebody. There's no, no somebody the truth to, to that. that. I ain't buy so, that one. Miami is horrific. We fly to Miami a lot because that's where my husband's from. And it is, especially getting off the plane to get to the rental car, because there is no train. So it's literally like walking a mile to get to it. So I would say, like, prepare yourself. Like, if you have kids that are my age and think they're too big for strollers, Think about getting a wagon, depending on what time you're coming in. Like, because if that child is asleep and you ain't got no way to carry them, good luck. <laughs> like, good luck. An, an, another situation where the child probably will get left. <laughs> no Somebody got to stay behind. Um, have you ever made a rookie mistake while traveling with the boys? Now, with the boys, with the boys, I'm always so, like, thoughtful and organized and together. But by myself, baby, I'd be like, this is embarrassing. How are you a travel content creator? <laughs> Let me tell you, I explain to everybody, travels by Tania is not the same thing as travels with Tania. They are two totally different things. Like, I miss like. <laughs> I do the best I can, but if I know I'm the only person that's going to be impacted by it, exactly, we're gonna figure. I just like when we get there. If it's for work, like, and so it's not like I usually make it work. I'm thinking of the last mistake that I made is this year I was going to Grand Cayman for my birthday, and I brought my expired passport. Oh, I oh, remember seeing oh, you post girl. that. Oh. I, the the passport expired in 20 fucking 17. Girl, where did you <laughs> find this passport? <laughs> Oh my god. How? 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 I was like, what? How did he get here? here? First so, of all, how did you navigate that? 
Nancy. That's when I was like, my husband is amazing. He is amazing. He's so nice. He's so kind. I called him like, Katie, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I brought the wrong passport. So literally at six o'clock in the morning, he puts our twin boys in the car and drives my new ear, my new, my oh, my current passport to the New Orleans airport. And I get it and I come back in. I had just missed that flight. Um, so I took the next one because luckily there's a 6 a.m. and a 7 a.m. from New Orleans to Atlanta. And so that is when I missed my connecting flight to Grand Cayman. And it was literally there. Like I saw the plane. They just had closed the door because of the connection. So he brought my new passport. Thank the Lord. Keep them. <laughs> I'm saying, baby, that's a good one. He got a brother or cousin or somebody? You don't want them. Okay. Oh, always. Damn. A good one for themselves. That's it. Like, it only be. Here. Like, I'm like, who, who on here? Who, 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 who watching right now? <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Um, was it this year? It, oh, it was. It was this year. I was. Um, I remember. I I checked for my passport in my bag. I don't know about y'all, but I check it like multiple times. Like, do I have my passport? Every five, passport? five minutes. Cause I Every five minutes, care. right? I checked the next thing. I and, checked the passport, but girl, I didn't open up to look at the fucking picture <laughs> or date. So no, no, no. So look. I remember I checked it so many times and I, I was heading to Playa del Carmen and I was looking for, and I was, and I remember I was walking out the door and I'm like, okay, I have everything. And I looked over at the bathroom and my passport was on the bathroom counter. And I was like, how the heck did it get right there? Because let me tell you, I was flying out of Baltimore. I live in Virginia. Oh, so God. I was like, there was no option to come back. I was so thankful that I turned to the left to say like, oh, your passport is sitting um, ah. right there. Because I don't know how you, it got out of there. That happened to me two weeks ago from St. Martin. First, there, there was a lot that happened the last. So when we were in St. Martin, um, sat, I, I was leaving on Sunday. Saturday, the hardware in my phone crashed. Y'all know it's something about Apple phones that when a new phone comes out, your phone all of a sudden start doing stuff it has never done before. Like now all of a Absolutely. sudden you're turning flips, you're doing cartwheels, you are pulling up all kind of error messages I've never seen. So my phone crashed. So now I'm having to figure out how I'm going to navigate the airport without a phone, without a mobile boarding pass, all these different things. And again, and this was a travels with Tania, not a travels by Tania. A matter of fact, Libra baby, we were there to celebrate her birthday. She's in the comments. And um, I had the brilliant idea because we were at an all-inclusive. Now, in hindsight, this idea was not that brilliant. I decided I was going to spend my morning because my flight didn't leave to the afternoon at the pool because I hadn't got to spend that much time there drinking mimosas. I don't know how many mimosas I had. I would like to say somewhere between probably. Hmm. When I tell the story in the future, I'm going to say two. But it was, probably, <laughs> it was probably more along the lines of six. So I get to the airport, and this is where it gets murky. Like somewhere along those lines, my mimosas kicked in. I make it to the counter, get my paperboard pass, and I think I went and sat down at my gate and fell asleep. I, I don't know. I just know I woke up and my flight was boarding and I could not find my passport or my boarding passes because I had slid my boarding passes in my passport. Now, what I can't figure out, there are still some pieces of this story that are missing to me. I don't know how I was keeping track of time or why even I decided that going to sleep was a good idea and I didn't have a phone or anything to set an alarm on. But one of the airport attendees came and sat next to me and he said, hey, I saw you when you came in. You know, you looked a little tired. And I was like, that's what it was. I hadn't slept. And he hands me my passport and my boarding passes that I did not even know were not still on my person. Let me tell you something. When they said God takes care of babies and fools, yeah. and fools about you. I can tell you what category I'm <laughs> talking about you. And I'm not even going to argue with you because that when I got home from that trip, I was sitting at home and I was like, you really just don't have good sense. You had no business at the pool. You had no business drinking mimosas. I don't even know where that young man found my passport and my boarding pass at. And the crazy thing is, my passport was in a case. When he gave it to me, I, it wasn't in a case. It was just my empty passport and my boarding pass. Now, I found my case in the bottom of my bag. But actually, from that trip, I came back and my toiletry bag is still saying, find me. So I don't, I can't put that piece together either. It was overwhelming, actually, now that I think about it. 
That was a lot. <laughs> That's how, you know, when we were coming, so Tania and I went to Brazil together last month. Oh, yeah. And um, in the middle, I was the first one to leave. I think they all left the day after me or something. I can't remember. Uh -huh. But I was the first one to leave. And I remember I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw your flight has been delayed, right? And I really wasn't paying attention. So I'm on the phone with Delta trying to figure it out, never get it resolved. And so I'm like, I, I tell my, I tell the driver, I text Isabella and I said, hey, cancel my, my um, ride to the airport. But what I didn't realize because I was half asleep is that my connecting flight was delayed, not my Lord. flight in Rio, right? And so I'm laying in the bed, da, 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 and I get an <laughs> alert, and it's like such and such, such and such time to board. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it's the connecting <laughs> flight. I hurried up and I packed my bags and everything, and I see the driver outside, and the guy at the front desk is like, oh, your driver's outside, but he said you don't need him. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> him, run out there and tell them like I need him, like you know, because I gotta finish checking out. But I'm like, you know, tell them, I, tell him I need him. So Isabella calls you, calls, mind you, it's like one in the morning. And he's she's like, they said you didn't need it. And I was like, I miss I misread. I, I misread, you know, have the my email, on, whatever, right? <laughs> but I remember when I checked in, Delta would not let me check in, right? And it kept saying that you have to check in with the partner airline first. Well, I thought, like when I checked in on my way to Rio, Delta checked me in on all the flights. But the partner airline, Latam, Latam, whatever you call it, did not check me in for my Delta flight. It only checked me in for that flight, right? So when I go to get through security, I'm in South Palo and I'm ready to get, I mean, I'm ready to, you know, get back to Atlanta. I don't have a boarding pass. I also don't speak Portuguese. So yeah, I hate the airport in Sao Paulo. I don't know if y'all been to that airport, but that airport is confusing and it's big. And nobody mm -hmm. spoke English. English. Yeah. And I know that that's very easy for me to think yeah. that somebody was going to speak English, <laughs> but me and this guy are having a whole tech conversation via text message on the Google Translate. Google Translate. I'm, cry I'm crying because I can't figure <laughs> it out. And he's asking me all these questions and nobody's listening to the fact that the Delta did not let me, Delta would not let me check in for the flight because it's now saying it's too early for my boarding pass. It's too late for me to get a boarding pass on the phone. So I'm in the, yeah, because it's saying it was too close to the time of boarding for me to be able to get an E, a mobile boarding pass. So finally, we run into this couple, and they speak English, and the lady was like, well, let me see your phone. I can try to find your confirmation number. And I was like, the confirmation number is not going to do anything for you because you cannot use it. And she's like, oh, look, it's letting me check in. And she's like, oh, I'm getting an error. And I'm like, I just wasted 20 minutes talking to <laughs> I you. I told you that. And I told you that it, it, that it was not going to work. So anyway, I, I, I find the Delta line. I, I, I get help. And the guy was like, it was very irresponsible of you to wait until the last minute to get your boarding pass. And I'm like, first of all, follow me on Instagram. My name is Realist of Passports. I do know how to <laughs> check it for a flight one time. But y'all don't know how to use this, this partner airline stuff. Like, I thought it was going to check me in for all my flights. Nonetheless, I had five minutes to board. And then when I got to the, got there, they were like, oh, your flight is delayed 20 minutes. So then I went shopping, <laughs> and then I boarded the flight. But I learned a very, very valuable mm -hmm. lesson that day when it comes to partner airlines. Yeah. yeah. Uh. I'm going to say this. As much fun as I had in Brazil, as much fun as we had, um, the flight situation to Brazil was tough. It was everybody on the trip had some type of flight issue. I know for me going, I get to the airport. I get ready to check in. They're like, oh, well, when you check in, because you had a, I had a layover, I think, in Colombia, they were like, we need to complete the Colombia visa process prior to boarding your, but before we can approve your boarding pass and print it out for you, you have to complete the Colombia visa process. The website kept crashing. So I'm standing there and I'm like, so y'all are going to let me miss my flight? Why, like, I have another layover before I get to Colombia. Why can't I deal with that when I get to Florida? And they were like, no, before we give you any of your boarding passes. And I ended up missing my flight. Now, it ended up working out in my favor because I ended up on a nonstop flight. But there was no way that I could have navigated that. And the people were rude. Like, I walked in the airport, and I'm looking for help because I'm like, I can't check in. It's a nest. I walk over to, you know, you walk over to whoever wearing the right color vest, like you do anywhere else. And um, the woman was like, 
the people you need are over there talking and not doing nothing else. And I'm like, oh, so we already got one of those kind of situations. And the airport kind of has you at their mercy because you can't cut them off. You can't go off. You can't do none of that because you're not going to risk not being able to fly anymore. And I know all of us individually had issues getting to Brazil, which sucks because that's something I have to share with people that are traveling. They're like, that's not an easy you're just going to be able to go to the airport, get on the plane. You more than likely are going to have some disgusting layovers. You more than likely are going to have to use a, dis, um, a partner company. And not only that, when they say that they only speak Portuguese, and again, I'm not privileged. From coming to your country, I need to at least have a good bearing of your language. Me knowing how to ask where I can find food, the store, and how to go to the bathroom, ain't going to help me navigate the airport. And if you're irresponsible like me, your phone's always on 9%. And so I'll be having to navigate situations with my phone on 9%. And it just, it just be ghetto, y'all. It'd be a lot. I'd be so sick of me. Oh, I'd be sick of me. I have a list of like key phrases that you should know in each like, and you know, every country, right? Like, you know, like, you know, my blood type is, where's the airport, how much is, blah, blah, blah. But now I know where is the ticket counter yeah. for such and such airline. Oh, that's like that is, because you, you definitely need to know that because i'm like i don't know how to say anything i knew how to say where is right. and that was it yeah um we mentioned she mentioned layovers how do you navigate long layovers with the boys uh they normally go to the lounge oh um, okay <laughs> I, I forgot who i was talking to <laughs> normally, oh. we, normally we'll go to the lounge if the lounge isn't available then we'll go get food and then we may play a game so we'll find like a, a empty gate and then play a game. So like I spy or they may take a corner and bring out all their toys and start racing the cars in the empty gate. And I'm like, y'all can look at them all you want. We're, we're not gonna do it in a crowded gate, but if there's an empty gate, we're gonna take mm -hmm. over and they're gonna stretch out and do their thing until, while they're entertained. Um, unless the airport has a play area, which many don't have in the US. I, I'm I know I'm that, starting you know, to see you know, more and more are popping up, though. Like, they're starting to be. I don't right. know what airport I was recently in, and I was like, oh, they're building, like, a little play oh, area. That's good. Mm-hmm. So um, Instagram is going to cut us off at 9 o'clock. Oh. So there's still one, a couple of questions that I have, you know. Just in reviewing your content, I saw that you just posted Slime Land. What was the name of it, the place that you? Lulu. <laughs> Lulu. Well, I called it Slime Land because all I saw was slime. Um, <laughs> And I saw how you shared your boys had an amazing experience. It's for people that are traveling with boys around the same age as your kids, with kids around the same age as yours, what other places can you recommend that you think would be good trips to where they would be able to get a bunch of enjoyment and it's worth the money and the time? So, so one of the places that my boys really love um, is Columbia, Cartagena. They loved it. Like our, <clears throat> there's a lot to do around there around like obviously like in the in Cartagena but like we went to Palenque they were able to like play the drums and mingle with the people like my boys love stuff like that then we did the volcano and then like the hotel we stayed at actually had like a a, a whole club for them so I, that was awesome I actually would not recommend New York because at that age unless your kids are in strollers or old enough that they can walk without complaining new york is a hard place like it is lots of walking for five-year-old legs it's super expensive slumo was like 250 something dollars for us four for fucking slime <laughs> okay yeah. so i mean every every activity that they enjoy costs 50 dollars per person so mm -hmm. new york is not is not is not the vibe at all um we go to Miami a lot, so they love doing Miami because there's just tons of beaches, there's tons of playgrounds, so there's tons of water parks. So things that like any place that kids can be outside and play and be active, I think those are great places for them to go. If we were to ask your boys their top three favorite destinations and they were able, what do you think that they would say? 
the Disney cruise would be their first thing because they loved going on the Disney cruise. They love, um, they love Columbia. So both Columbia, the country, and then they also liked Columbia, South Carolina. Surprisingly, okay. that's one of their favorite because they have a really good children's museum. They have a really, really good zoo. They have this huge farmer's market um, that they, like tons of vendors. So tons of food and things to play with. So those would probably be their top places. Oh, and Milwaukee, because I'm from Milwaukee, and Granny gives them everything they want. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, As a so, parent, oh, well, go ahead, Jennifer, I'll let you go. I'm sorry. Now. So <clears throat> I know you mentioned that, you know, people always say, like, once you have kids, you can't travel, your life is going to change. Da, da, da. Do you still get that? Even though you're proving, do you still get, like, comments like, oh, you can't keep doing this or whatever? Oh, so one once the kids went from so the kids are now in kindergarten and so people are saying like once they get in big school you know like the grades then you can't miss school like that you're gonna have to maneuver around their schedule these children are out of school every month what are you yep. talking about there's fall break like literally every month Fall break is in like Labor Day. There's Labor Day in September, fall break in October, Thanksgiving in November, and then Christmas in December. MLK in January and February is Mardi Gras here in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. March and spring break. They get out of school in May. Ma'am, what are you talking about? They are literally out every yeah. month. And what's the difference between that and having to navigate the paid time off, you take it someone with a career. You make it a line and you make it work. Right. You make it work. And that, and that that's also communication with their teacher, right? So it's like, oh yeah, they may meet, miss two days this week. We'll get the homework in advance. You'll do your homework while on vacation. It's, we make it work, right? So, but there's still plenty, if, even if they didn't miss a day, these children are always out of school. It ain't like when we were in school. Like they always out. <laughs> yeah, I know this because I'm like, what the heck is fall break? We ain't never had no fall no, break. No, me neither. I had no fall break. And there's so many teachers' development days. You like, these teachers really should be knowing what they're doing all these development days. Yeah. That's the thing. What was your question, Tania? We got nine minutes. Let me think on it. <laughs> so for those of you that, um, that are just joining us, I am <laughs> drinking cookies and cream liquor. It is um, a South African... It's a product of South Africa, even though it says it's imported in Rockwall, Texas. And I say that to say the alcohol content is 16.9%. And so that's probably why I don't remember. Um, <laughs> but I think I got it. So as a parent, you know, we talked about your kids' favorite destinations. What do you feel like are destinations that were easy for you as a parent to navigate that you would tell newer parents that are just not trying to get acclimated, trying to find their way, what would you tell them maybe is a good location to go to? Ooh, okay. okay, so I would say it's more about the hotel or your accommodations, right? Okay. So if you can stay in a place that, if your kids are old enough, that has a kid's lounge, that have activities for the children, then that is less that you have to do because there's already built-in entertainment for them that has a pool that has a playground so you now like as a parent it feels like you're always trying to entertain kids even if you're at home or mm -hmm. if you're traveling either way you're trying to entertain them so being at a place that can kind of self-entertain makes it a lot easier and then you can enjoy the vacation yourself i also would say make sure you find a location that you actually want to go to as well so then you can have things that you like to do so like my boys they gonna, they're going to go to a vineyard because i like vineyards and there's plenty of space for you to run around and see the grapes and learn about agriculture and do all the things so it's it's a win-win in that sense so you don't always have to think like oh disney nickelodeon this which are great places to take your kids but you can also go to other places as well that you enjoy and figure out opportunities for them to be able to have fun doing the stuff you enjoy as well i think that's really good advice and, and i think it's interesting that you say at the vineyard because i know when i have that conversation with parents sometimes about how it's acceptable to take your kids to vineyards because a lot of them do have kid-friendly activities that you can you're like 
I could take my child to the venue if you absolutely yeah. should. Now, I'm not telling absolutely. you to go in there and, and, and get, you know, shit faced because you have to get them home and you still have to, you can't, they're not going to babysit them at the <laughs> venue. But definitely, that's one I don't think a lot of parents realize you can still incorporate your kids into some of these adult activities, especially out the country, mm -hmm. because you'll find that when you go into some of these spaces, even me as a woman that's traveling without kids, I see kids. Right. And you can tell which kids are well traveled because you'll see those kids in there. You can tell that they're used to being an adult in spaces with adults and they're able to navigate them because they have the experience to navigate them. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree. And I always appreciate that. And so I know that we have some people that maybe hopped on late and that might have missed your introduction. Martina, can you just share again your social media and what kind of content people can expect to find on your page? Yeah, so I'm a traveling twin mama. I travel with my twin five-year-old boys, uh, Marley and Jameson, and my content focuses on travel after kids. So not just family travel, gives tons of tips on what to bring, how to bring it. Actually, if you go to my blog, MarquitasTravels.com or the traveling twin mama.com, it all goes to the same place. I have plenty of blog posts with my, t my favorite products, tips on how to get kids to sleep on the plane, uh, different locations we've been to, the pros and cons of all of those. That's where you can really get a lot of the tips as well as my products like my ebook and my interactive checklist to help packing become a lot easier with kids. Um, that is a lot what I focus on, but also just being a, being a mom and being a woman. So solo female travel, girl trips, vacations, you kind of get a glimpse of all of those things both on my website and on my Instagram. We a lot of time talking about you traveling with kids but i know like you said you also focus on solo trips and vacations what is a solo trip that you would recommend for a woman that is just kind of getting her feet wet with travel that may be easier to navigate one of my favorite places is santa barbara it is like now you, you can't be on a budget going to santa barbara <laughs> but but it's it's just so beautiful <laughs> It's absolutely great. The vineyards are beautiful. The beaches are great. There's mountains there. You can go horseback riding in the mountains. It's just, it's a great, great place to go to um, Santa Barbara. And then you can like take the train. So I flew into LA and I just took the train up. It's a two hour train ride to Santa Barbara. It's super easy. I think that's an easy thing to navigate. Okay. And we know if you also hit the jackpot with your husband, you said you don't have you don't have any cousins for us. So if you don't be in her DMs asking for a cousin, a brother, whatever, that's not what we're doing. What would you say is one of your favorite vacation recommendations? So we love St. Lucia. St. Lucia is just so St. Lucia, a lot of their rooms only have three walls and that fourth wall is open to the pitons and the ocean a lot of them have private pools so we we did that for i think our fifth or sixth anniversary it's just absolutely the most romantic and beautiful place ever it's, it's gorgeous i wish i had me a man child so i could go <laughs> to with the three walls <laughs> i'm telling you i want to be looking out at the ocean too yes it's good <laughs> Well, thank you. We have come to the end. Instagram is going to cut us off. But I just want to say thank you for joining us. Guys, make sure you are following Marquita. Um, go to her website, thetravelingtwinmama.com, because she has an interactive checklist and an amazing ebook um, all about the tips and tricks for travel. So please, I hope you will join us again. And of thank course. you again for um, for coming on. Um, for sure. so maybe you want to say anything? Marquita. Thank you for joining. Um, it, Jennifer already said it, but I especially appreciate parents being on this platform because some of the advice that you were given about how you wouldn't be able to travel and things like that once you had kids, I'm inundated with that kind of advice. That's what I hear every time I go on a trip. It's not that destination was beautiful. Well, you keep saying you want to have kids and you know when you have kids. And so I appreciate the parents that are able to come on here and say, no, I've been able to do it with kids. And not only have I done it, I have these resources on my page and things like that. And so if you are a parent or an aspiring parent and you want travel to be at the forefront of your life, definitely be grateful for people like Marquita that are sharing their journeys, the good and the bad, in order for you to be able to navigate it because they are making mistakes for us. And <laughs> that's always beneficial when I know not to, not to take, if I have twins, not to be on there with no double stroller in Europe thinking mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to make it. 
And so thank everyone for joining us tonight. Marquita, thank you. And of course, thank you for having me. Anytime. Of course. Time, anytime. Go ahead, Jen. Um, Marquita, can you text me a picture of you and your family real quick? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, everybody have a great night. Thank you for joining Sips and Trips, and we'll catch you on our next episode. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.